So we have studied UDP in detail. We start discussing the other protocol of the transport layer, TCP or transmission control protocol. So the very first question would be why would you want to use TCP instead of UDP? The main reason would obviously be you don't want to lose your data. While you want to transmit your data from one place to another or you want to get some data from some other place, you want that your data to be reliably delivered. So whenever you want reliability, whenever you do not want to lose data, you would go for TCP instead of UDP. Uh, let's go back to UDP for a moment. What was UDP? UDP would take the data from the application layer, insert some amount of header. Uh, if you remember, UDP was specifically 8 bytes of header and then send the packet or the datagram to the network layer to be delivered further. Now, uh, if you remember uh, what were the header information were, UDP specifically inserted four different types of information in its header, the source port number, the destination port number, the total length and checksum. That was all. It takes the data from the application layer, divide the num uh, data into small number of packets or data crumbs, insert these eight bytes of header and then send to the network layer. Now TCP would also do the same thing. It will take data from the application layer, divide those data into smaller number of packets and insert header information into those packets and then deliver those packets to the network layer. But the header information of TCP is much bigger than the header information of UDP. That means the amount of data, amount of information in TCP header is much more than the amount of information in the UDP header. We'll see what those extra information are. But the first question is why would be the TCP header bigger than the UDP header? It is simply because TCP provides many more services than the UDP. And when you provide many more services, obviously you have to uh, insert many more extra information in the header and that makes the TCP header bigger than the UDP header. Now, what does TCP provide? apart from the services provide by, provided by UDP. Now, remember, you'd be provided two basic services, multiplexing, demultiplexing, and checksumming. The multiplexing, demultiplexing, it provided by using source port and destination port number, and checksumming was used for error detection. Now, TCP obviously provides these two services. Apart from these two services, TCP provides the very important service known as reliable delivery of data. That means when TCP takes data from the application layer, it gives a guarantee to the application layer that I will deliver the data to the other end reliably. There would be no loss of data. It also guarantees that the data will be delivered in an orderly fashion. That means if the data is divided into 10 number of packets, TCP guarantees that the other side application would receive those packets in that particular order. That means it would receive the first packet first, it would receive the second packet, then the third packet and so on. Apart from this reliable data delivery guarantee and orderly data delivery guarantee, TCP provides two extra services known as flow control and congestion control. We'll be discussing all these things in detail over this discussion of TCP. Now here comes the most important part. TCP provides reliable delivery of data guarantee while it works on the top of an unreliable medium. Remember, TCP works over network layer and network layer is an unreliable medium. And TCP provides the guarantee of reliability to application layer when it itself works on the top of an unreliable medium. What does it mean? Let's understand using an example. So let's have this example. Say I undertake delivery of letters, parcels, this sort of things. And I guarantee the people that whatever I take for delivery, I deliver those parcels or letters within 24 hours in any city of India. And I also guarantee that I will deliver the data without any problem that the uh, delivery of the letters and the parcels would obviously be done and they will never get lost. So this uh, I guarantee to, the, to my clients. Say these are my clients to whom I guarantee. 
Now I take the parcels, the letters from these people uh, after giving them the guarantee. Now assume that I personally do not deliver this letter. I take the service of a third party who has their own logistics. They have their own fleet of van, own fleet of flight and all these things to uh, send these packets from one place to another. Now this third party this third party do not give any guarantee to me that means it does not say that I will guarantee I guarantee that uh, your uh, parcel will be delivered within this specific period of time that means I am taking the service of this third party who does not provide any guarantee but I am providing guarantee to my clients now is it possible think of it I am uh, guaranteeing my clients that your uh, packets, your data will be delivered, but the actual delivery is done by this third party. They do not give any uh, any guarantee of timing. They do not give any guarantee that data will not get lost. If they uh, do not give any guarantee, how can I give guarantee to my clients? It is impossible. The same thing happens with. Uh, transport layer. Now let's see the same situation in terms of application layer, transport layer and networking. Now let's see what happens in networking. So transport layer takes the data from application layer, the applications. So when data is delivered from application layer to transport layer and if transport layer is using TCP, it guarantees application layer that Whatever data it is taking from application layer, that data will be delivered to the other end reliably. There will be no loss of data and data will be delivered in order. But remember, transport layer is not actually delivering the data to the other end. Transport layer actually delivers this packet to the network layer. And it is the responsibility of network layer to deliver this data to the other host. Now, network layer does not provide any guarantee that the data will be delivered. It says that it tries its best, but the data may get lost. So, data loss, data can get lost in the network layer. Network layer also does not guarantee anything about the order of the packets that means it does not guarantee that the first packet will be delivered first the second packet will be delivered next packets can uh, arrive at the other end in any order but transport layer guarantees to the application layer that the data will be delivered to the other end reliably there will be no data loss and data will be delivered in order. Now this is a contradiction. Transport layer is guaranteeing to application layer but the actual work is done by network layer and network layer is not giving any guarantee. Now in this lies the major the main work of TC. Now let's pause for a moment and understand the whole scenario. Uh, TCP is taking data from the application layer and then the, uh, after creating the packets is delivering those data to the network layer while uh, uh, guaranteeing to application layer that the data will be delivered and TCP by itself is working on an unreliable medium the network layer so the most and the most basic task of TCP is providing reliable data transfer how does it provide reliable data transfer while working on an unreliable medium is the main task of building uh, a protocol uh, a design process which is known as reliable data transfer now we'll be sequentially developing this reliable data transfer protocol to understand how this is actually done in tcp so let's straight away get into our main important task the task is building a reliable data delivery service remember this data delivery service is basically a service which provides reliable guarantee of reliable data transfer while working on an unreliable medium now we will develop this uh, model develop this protocol incrementally in increment steps that means 
uh, we'll first assume that the network layer is a reliable medium then slowly slowly we'll introduce errors in the network layer uh, ultimately we'll see how a protocol how we design a service or a protocol which will provide reliable data delivery guarantee while working on that unreliable medium now let's start building this protocol one uh, in steps in our first step the, our assumption would be that the network layer is reliable obviously network layer is not reliable but because we are trying to develop a protocol and because while developing a protocol we should go in small incremental steps so our first assumption would be that the network layer is reliable and see how our transport layer or how TCP would behave if network layer is reliable and incrementally then we'll introduce errors in the network layer and see what changes we require to, to what changes will require to be made in our reliable data delivery protocol so how our protocol should behave if the network layer is reliable this should be very easy let's first see what the sender would do remember we are assuming that the network layer is reliable that means there is no data loss in the network layer and the packets are delivered in orderly fashion but again subsequently we'll see how this protocol will change when errors are introduced in the network layer but our first assumption is that the network layer is reliable if our network layer is reliable what will happen in the center part application layer let's introduce a forever loop that means this would forever happen in the transport layer of the center part so in the center part forever that means uh, the uh, transport layer will always transport layer will wait for data to come from the application layer so transport layer will always be listening uh, for data to be coming from the application layer so now if data arrives from the application layer What transport layer will do? Transport layer will divide the data into small packets wherever necessary. If the amount of data is large, obviously it will divide the data into smaller packets and then it will simply deliver the packets to the network layer. As simple as that so forever the the transport layer will wait for data to come from the application layer and whenever data arrives from the application layer it will create small packets from the that data and then deliver the data packets to the network layer now because we are assuming that the data network layer is reliable this data packets will flow to the other end the other the receiver side what will happen at the receiver side the receiver side the same thing will happen for forever transport layer will wait for data to come from the network layer now we're talking about, about the opposite side the receiver side the receiver side is waiting for data to come from the network layer and if data comes then it will take the data and deliver to the application layer so when data arrives if packet arrives extract the data from the packet why do we need to extract data because the packets contain certain header information it will remove the header information the and extract the data from the packets and deliver the data deliver the data to the application layer of the other side so these are the 
two simple steps uh, in the center side and receiver side remember this is when we're assuming that the network layer is reliable now let's name this first uh, step of the protocol as rdt 1.0 the nomenclature is taken from your textbook of Ross and Kudos because they are using the same terminology. Let's also use the same terminology RDT. Uh, we are calling this as the first version of RDT. RDT stands for Reliable Data Transfer Protocol. Now let's introduce some functions. So when trans whenever application layer, whenever application layer sends data to the uh, transport layer, let's name a function as RDT send. RDT stands for reliable data transfer. What is RDT send? R RDT send, we're assuming RDT send as a name of a function which is invoked whenever data is generated from the application layer. Whenever data is generated in the application layer, it invokes this function RDT send, and by invoking this function, data will be transmitted from the application layer to the uh, from the application layer to the transport layer of the sender side. So as soon as data arrives to the transport layer, it will create small packets from the uh, data that has arrived from the application layer. So let's introduce a function name make packet this function will be invoked to create packets again remember these are we are giving names of certain functions will be in which will be invoked remember application layer transfer layer these are all softwares so this uh, there will be certain modules and we are naming these modules whenever data comes from the application layer to the network layer this module is invoked we are naming it as rdt send by invoking this module data is sent from the application layer to the transport layer by invoking this module make packet small packets will be created and after the packets will be created the packets will be delivered to the network layer and let's name a module say udt send this function or this module is invoked when data is delivered to the network layer we are naming it udt uh, to stress the fact that uh, uh, u stands for unreliable where udt stands for unreliable data del data transfer because network layer is unreliable that's why we're naming as udt send now let's see uh, what happens in the receiver side receiver uh, in the receiver side the transport layer is waiting for to data to come from the network layer whenever data comes from the network layer say it invokes a function called rdt receive it simply states that data is received reliably ultimately transport layer provides a guarantee of reliable data delivery so that's why we're naming it as rdt that's what whenever data comes from the network layer it invokes this function reliable data transfer receive function and then after receiving those packets it will extract the data from those packets so let's introduce a function name extract and finally when data is delivered to the application layer say it invokes a function known as delivered data so these particular functions are invoked at both the end and this is the finite state machine of the our first level of our protocol which we have named rdt1 and this fsm has been taken from your textbook so this is your sending site remember wait for call from above means the sending side is waiting for uh, data to be arriving from the application layer call from above means waiting for data to come from the application layer. application layer is above the transport layer and at the receiving side what will happen with the transport layer forever the transport layer will be waiting for data to come from below below means it's waiting for data to come from the network layer and these are the different name of the functions which we have introduced so whenever data comes when this particular function is invoked rdt send and after uh, data comes from the application layer it will make packet using this function make PKT which we have introduced in the previous uh, slide uh, so this particular packets will be created and this packets will be sent to the network layer 
and at the other end netroclear will receive those packets whenever data packets are received this particular function is invoked rdt receive it will extract the data from these packets and then deliver the data to the application layer so the first level of our reliable data transfer protocol is very simple because we are assuming that the network layer is reliable there is no loss of data data are delivered at the other end in a guaranteed way that's why only these particular functions are invoked so in the next lecture we'll introduce small errors in our network layer and then we'll see what changes will be required to be made to these different fsms what changes will we have to do to ensure that those uh, errors those errors whenever they will be introduced in the network layer how this protocol will handle those errors this will be our topic in our subsequent lecture thank you